we have been joined by Uncle Gillard, so I, I wish to introduce him now and, and welcome him, welcome him to our uh, to our conversation, uh, to our dialogue on uh, healthy, sustainable, and fair food systems in Australia. Um, so, Uncle Gillard, as, uh, as Senator Lydia Thorpe uh, mentioned, is a respected elder from the Uluwai Nation, located in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland. He's involved in connecting the sacred song lines of the ancient traditions of Aboriginal peoples around the world uh, uh, in work to prove that they have a dreaming that links them to the original creation. He currently lives on and runs a sheep and cattle property on his ancestral lands and most recently had an asteroid named after him in recognition mm. of his contribution to astronomy. And he also, for those who don't know, is the last surviving member of the Aboriginal Tent Embassy. So a uh, very warm welcome yeah. indeed mm. to Uncle Gillard, Michael Anderson. We're honoured and delighted that you are able to join us this morning. Yeah, nice to be with you guys. How are you doing? Um, I think where the topic is about food security and, you know, how we survive, uh, you know, in this crazy world that we're, we're living in. Um, but one of the things that I, I saw last night um, was a National Geographic fellow talking about um, people almost wanting him to shoot him down in America when he was sort of doing some flyovers uh, looking at uh, how they crop and how they farm. And, um, you know, we're, we're all a bit disturbed about that. And now they're blaming, you know, all the cattle for, um, what do you call it, too much methane gas in the air. Um, so, and, you know, and they're not worried about uh, the coal seam gassing and, and uh, all the coal when they expose it to mine it um, and the damage as that's being done. Um, but when it comes to food, we, um, our people, we had stories. Um, and if I can just tell you very quickly, um, uh, when the creators came and they created our society, um, we, the Ualii and Gumroy and uh, Wiradjuri um, as well, from what I understand now, uh, we all have the same skin groups. And, um, and the, those skin groups, those four skin groups, connect you to an ecosystem. And within that ecosystem, everything that lives within one single ecosystem uh, is family. And uh, in our case, we have, uh, let's say, uh, I, I tell you the um, Nyunga. And the Nyunga tree is a tree, and that's the Mimi, that's the, that's the mother of that ecosystem. And that's the Kurijong tree, and that grows on rocky ridges and uh, on rocky soil uh, where there's plenty of stone. and um, and Within that system, um, we have uh, all the food. Uh, so not only are the humans, uh, uh, humans have a relationship there, but they are they're all the different plants and animals and birds and, and, and fish where we connect down to the rivers, uh, ridges touch the waters. Uh, this is where we have all the family. And so like in the United States of America, when you're talking with Native American Indians and Canadian, um, one of the beauties about that is that they always talk about um, all the family, and um, and we have a similar system, um, except within that system, we are generally not supposed to eat um, uh, animals, um, birds that are related to us as part of that ecosystem. And so it's a conservation method of uh, maintaining our population and our numbers. It's the same as the grasses. It's the same as um, um, the the fish, um, and and of course we eat. We then have the next door tribes, um, next door clans rather. Uh, they too, like the myria, um, that's the lignum in the swamp areas of the of the um, uh, big floodplains, and uh, of course they have a different system. They have different types of animals, different types of birds, different type of vegetation. And so within this, these systems, um, this is how we um, manage to live uh, in, a, in a sustainable lifestyle um, so that we're not all farming one particular area and we move around. And because our food um, is a, a very, in a very short space of time in terms of when you, when you can harvest it, um, you have to be in the right place at the right time. You've only got a, you've got a window of about two to three weeks um, and so you've really got to make sure that uh, you're there at that place. And, and 
over the thousands of years that we've lived here, we understand the system, we understand how that works. And so we didn't have to till the soil because nature provided everything that we needed. And um, it, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful um, system um, if we can only get back to it. But then nowadays, of course, we, we are, my people are now looking at being able to sort of um, establish a, a mechanism or a method by, by where we can plant those in a particular area so that um, in this modern day that we're forced to live in, uh, we're unable to sort of get around to the, all those places where those things are naturally. So we have to now uh, germinate them in our own areas and then increase the, uh, the numbers so that we do have access to them at certain times. And of course, we have essentially eight uh, systems of uh, cycles, life cycles of things. So you, sometimes you're not eating, not eating plants because they're not there and uh, fruit. Um, so you're, you're living on fish and you're living on uh, birds and you're living on, so you're living on meats es essentially with uh, red meat and, um, and uh, uh, porcupine and at, uh, liz animals uh, like goannas. Um, so yeah, we, we have a, a very, very great variety in our diet and, um, but it's all sugar free, which is, <laughs> which is, which is a wonderful uh, lifestyle. Hello? Yeah. Hey? Yeah, sorry, I, I just um, uh, wasn't sure if you were, uh, um, if, uh, if that was the conclusion of your remarks or... No, no, I was about? good. Well, I, I thought that you guys may have had um, an opportunity for people to ask questions. Oh, of course. Um, yes, uh, absolutely. If uh, if anyone would like to ask a question, um, yeah, we've got um, we've got uh, about ten minutes. Um, if, if anyone would like to uh, put a question to uh, to Uncle Gillard, please um, please write it in. Um, write it in. Uh, write it in now. Um, uh, just while we're we're waiting for that, uh, Uncle Gillard, I just want to, to thank you so much for. Um, for taking the time uh, in your, your beautiful country up there, it looks like a, a wonderful, uh, a wonderful sunny day um, to, to share with us uh, those insights on on laws and and practices of uh, of your people and, and First Nations people around the country. That's uh, been the foundation of stewardship and living in harmony with these lands for for so long. Um, what uh, what do you feel um, uh, in terms of you know the challenges that we're facing at the moment? Um, we need to start making some major changes in order to uh, you know to live here for the rest of this century, let alone the next you know thousand years or ten thousand years. Um, and particularly, um, and we know this is a subject of, of interest to you, uh, the question of water um, and the the Darling the Darling River, the Barker, um, and the irrigation. Um, would you like to say something about that? Yeah, we um, um, the the Barker, where I come from, the Barwon Darling, um, the Barwon River, we call that stretch from Mangadai from the Queensland border down to Burke, um, Corolla, and uh, Corolla is um, is big river, and then we have the Warren, which is um, uh, it's now pronounced as Narren, and that's the Narren River, which goes down to a Ramsar registered site, which. Um, uh, belongs to us, um, and that's a major breeding ground for both overseas birds and um, domestic birds as well. And um, unfortunately, the cotton industry is sort of doing so much damage, and the amount of water that they're taking out of that system, it's, it's, uh, it's extraordinary. And it's interfering with a lot of our nature. But I think a lot of people need to understand as well that they really need to have a look at the New South Wales uh, Conservation and Biodiversity Act uh, because that's allowing people out here in the west where, there, where we don't have big rainfall and they're doing mass land clearing. It's it, it, like, you know, they're just knocking down all our trees and terraforming it so to a point where they're, you know, just growing or trying to grow uh, wheat, barley and, um, you know, um, other cereal grains and it, it just doesn't work. You know, you might have two or three year good years and then all of a sudden you, you end up in a drought again. You know, they, they don't understand the cyclical uh, programs of weather patterns in this country. 
and uh, you know, and they and they don't even look at their historical, you know, meteorological data to sort of see how the rain falls and the patterns of rain. Now, in that in that uh, uh, Conservation Biodiversity Act in New South Wales, um, it, it's an extraordinary act when you look at it because it gives them, you know, a carte blanche right to just destroy country um, and ecosystems uh, for the benefit of growing cereal grains. And then there's a clause in there which uh, the government wrote in to say, basically, after five years, if you haven't really made any money, well, then we, we've put $75 million aside every year um, now for a certain number of years. I don't know how long it is. I, I forget. But there's $75 million a year. So these farmers who are not making the grade or not making any money from cropping um, after, five, uh, after a certain period of time are then able to apply to this for this um, out, money out of the 75 million um, to rewild the country, and um, and part of this you know farming methodology is to put up these great eight foot fences called cluster fences around the around their properties, and that's to stop them um, you know the the migration of native animals and they're killing them in the thousands. Uh, even to the point where in Queensland, southern Queensland, some of them are actually electrifying the bottom of the fence, and so the goannas and the and the porcupines are dying in large numbers um, um, because they can't get through and they get electrified by these fences. And so, you know, you've got a carnage going on out out here that's just uh, like when you talk about ecocidal maniacs, you know, the, these guys, are, the, these farmers out here just don't care, mate, about killing anything. And um, and we, on the other hand, you know, it's it's really hurting us spiritually, emotionally, uh, because we're seeing our native animals, our totemic animals, you know, that we're related to, um, die. We're watching our native plants be totally wiped out and erased from the system, and um, and you know that's our native food. And um, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of damage going on, and um, I, you know it would be great if the public or someone did some studies about this and got involved in developing campaigns to stop this and go to government and say this is madness. Thank you uh, for those words, Uncle Gillar, um, and and the reminder of just how destructive the uh, the food and fibre system really is uh, in in your land and in so many other places around the country. Um, as, uh, as Kelly said, what an insane destructive system for managing ecosystems. And, and Senator Leah Thorpe said earlier, if the, if the country's hurting, if the country's in pain, then it's, uh, it impacts us all. And I think that's the, um, you know, that's the, that's the message here, isn't it? That uh, um, this, is a, this is an industry and a system that really is, uh, is fundamentally destructive of, of life. Um, and that uh, you know that has to that has to change, and that's what that's what today is about. That's what this whole process um, yeah. is uh, is really about. And and you know there's an there was a study done some time ago, and I've I've learnt this word now, and I love this word. It's called solastalgia, and uh, solastalgia um, was it, it now goes into the mental harm to people, and it addresses the issue of the psychological impacts that um, a changing environment has on its people. And, um, and quite frankly, you know, the, the study was done amongst some older farmers um, in the Hunter Valley who were um, just ordinary, um, what do they call them, uh, dairy farmers. And because of the massive coal industry and the acquisition of a lot of those farms by the big coal industries, uh, coal corporations, and they, um, th and the people who didn't sell out, um, they just watch their, the country around them just change, you know, in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years. And these people go back, and the ones who sold out go back to have a look at, you know, the country and see what's happened to where the old farms were. And, and you just don't recognise it. it. It's not the same. It's been completely changed. Um, and, um, and so you know, they'd done a study amongst those people, and they found out that, you know, the mental harm that it causes these people and these are non-aboriginal people who were born and raised on these farms in many cases you know the older ones in their 60s in their 70s in their 80s and um, and even in the 90s and 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 this study was done and it, it describes the the mental impact that it had on them now you know if, if that's happening to non-aboriginal people 
then can, you can imagine the destructive impacts, psychological impacts and emotional and spiritual impacts it has on Aboriginal people when we see these things changing around us. And so, and that goes to, that goes to a lot of pain and heartache within the peoples um, and, and it does cause a lot of mental harm. <clears throat> and of course, mental harm, um, so a, a devastating change to the environment like that and to our surroundings <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> um, certainly um, is cause to look at because, you know, mental harm to a group, <coughs> um, deliberate or otherwise, um, you know, is a, is, a, is a very serious aspect um, of life and, uh, and it, it's, it's an element um, of genocide. Um, and this is what, you know, Australia gets away with because Australia does not have laws against genocide. And, um, and of course, the mental harm to the group is a, is a key aspect to that. Uh, absolutely, um, uh, it's, um, it's it's an indictment on this uh, on this country and and 200 years plus of, of colonisation and dispossession, as the senator uh, spoke of earlier. Um, and it's not it hasn't finished. It's not something that uh, happened at a moment in history and stopped, as you say. It's it's ongoing through so many ways, and that. Uh, the way that you put it there is uh, is um, is so powerful. Um, uh, one question that has come up um, is where you're living in your land. Is is there opportunities still for uh, for production of uh, of indigenous food? Um, and and I know you mentioned when we we're discussing uh, today the Kwandong tree and Mitchell grass. Um, would you would you like to say a little bit about? About that, yeah, we um, we have um, we have ten Kwandong trees, believe it or not, on our property here. Um, down the back, down there, um, behind me, as you can see, um, down there, that's the river down the back there. So my the house where I'm living is right on our river, uh, the Bukara River, and, um, and that's an Indian word, not an Aboriginal word, by the way. That's from India. Um, um, anyway, the um, our land is here, and we we got some water in there, thank goodness, um, now. Um, but the most we have uh, there's a hundred thousand acres of land here that is just natural. Um, there's no no area that's been cleared, and it's all native vegetation all over the place. And um, and we have all those native trees, so we can we can propagate a lot of stuff here and grow. Um, um, but you know, and, and, and fortunately, our native trees and native fruits and um, plants, not many of them need a lot of water. In fact, you know, when we had the big drought was on, I was taking photos of these trees, and they were so brightly green in the drought while the, the, the grasses were gone, the trees were there. So, you know, we had food, and it was feeding birds as well. So, um, and, and you know, and some of our uh, native animals, but um, they were dying of thirst, of course, out in the different paddocks because of fencing that we have. And I opened all the gates to just let it, let them roam. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a place where we're now looking at um, growing all the, all that stuff and increasing the production, I suppose, of those. But again, like we have a beautiful thing here, which is the natural sugar. Um, and it's not that sweet, but um, you know it's it's uh, sweeter than some of the gruey um, plants. It's high in vitamin C and E and and etc. And D. One of the things that we have here is um, um, a ver this variety, which has all those um, um, lovely vitamins in it. And um, and this is what what sustained us. You know, we didn't have the fats um, from sugars on our people. That's why we were pretty. Uh, mean, lean machines. You know, <laughs> when you look at some of those old photographs of, of our of our old people, they were not very fat. It wasn't until they started eating all that uh, white fella sugar, like jams and <laughs> and um, and bully beef and uh, flour, uh, the wheat flour, that you know the, you started to sort of see obesity start to rise in our old people on those missions. Um, and they were sedentary anyway, and they couldn't move around because here, you know, you've you got to move around and walk around. So it wasn't as though we had a motor car to drive around in back in those days. But still in all, if we go back to that natural diet and, uh, and we can develop our country uh, the way we want to, then I think we can create our own industries just by, just by living with nature. And, um, and it's all organic and, and uh, we'll change the world, you know. You, you're just going to get rid of something 
get rid of it. But yeah, like you say, we have uh, the grasses are starting to come back now. Um, for some reason, we we in the last um, what, what what month we in now? We're in uh, heading towards August. So in the last eight months, one of one of the uh, beauties about um, um, this year, 2021, um, that pleases us, um, that sort of sets us aside from this worrying about this COVID-19 stuff. Uh, is the fact that we've had rain every month, you know, even though it's uh, maybe only 10 or 20 um, mils, but that is good because it keeps the life, it keeps the moisture in the soil, and we're back to a normal um, sort of monthly average um, that, that's going on uh, right now in the last eight months. And whereas in the last 10 years, we, we've had all our yearly rain, about 300 to 400 mils, um, in a period of three months, and then the rest of the rest of the period is just dry, and that's been the case for the, for the last seven years now. Um, but this year, 2021, is back to that normality of uh, a bit of rain every month, and that that's that keeps our country absolutely um, divine in terms of looking at uh, being able to go out there and and look at nature and see the animals breeding again, see the birds coming back. Like our bush turkey, you know the gumbel uh, you fellow call them busted bird. You know they're back here; they're starting to breed back here again on the country. So they, so they, so there's, there's, there is this revitalisation, but uh, the question is how long will it go? And um, because we know that this in this modern day, it's, it's sort of everything seems to be going in a in a crazy cyclical um, circle, and and we we don't understand. Um, this we do we do register it with our birds. We see the bird when we see the birds starting to disappear from our area, and we start seeing grasses not growing or trees starting to wilt. Certain trees, and we look at uh, different plants on the side of the river. That tells us um, all of those things are our scientists. Uh, they tell us that there's a uh, weather change coming or something. There's a change coming, and unfortunately, get ready because we're not going to be here anymore for a while. So. Um, yeah, the, all these things show up and, and uh, as a child when I was growing up because we spent so much time on the river and out in the bush, um, you know, they, they taught, I, I learnt all those things and it's, it's by observation. So every time you're travelling around, you've got to look for those grasses, you've got to look for the trees, you've got to look for the wilting, you look for birds and, if, and you look for certain behaviour in animals and, and if those things are changing, well then, you know, get yourself ready. and. And over the last um, 20 years now, I think I've been able to sort of register uh, those changes because, um, yeah, it, it, the memory memory comes back. You never lose the memory. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Uncle Gila, again, for, um, for, for everything that you've shared with us this morning. It's been an absolute privilege to be able to, to spend these uh, 20 minutes with you and, and uh, hear your wisdom and, and what you've, uh, just in, this, in these brief few minutes, what you shared with us is... Um, I'm sure I speak for all of us who've, who've had the privilege of listening to this to, uh, you know, to really gain a, a deep insight into um, what sustainability really means in terms of like a, you know, a, a deep, respectful, uh, long-term relationship with the country and, and observing, as you say, and being attendant to, uh, to the changes and to um, you know, what the country needs. Um, and I think the messages that we're getting uh, very clearly is that uh, profound changes are needed now if we wish to um, if we wish to maintain ourselves in this in this land um, uh, because the you know the way that we're managing the land the food systems the agriculture is is simply not sustainable um, and that touches on the question of diet and and the the plants and foods and animals that uh, have formed the basis of a sustainable food system here for so many thousands of years um, there's there's profound lessons there for for all of us um, in, in uh, considering these issues and making decisions on them as we go forward. Um, so um, I just want to, again, thank you for your time today. We will um, we will close with you uh, now. Um, I've greatly appreciated you taking the time out this morning. Um, uh, I'm pleased that uh, your land has been able to, to drink and, and have regular water. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful up there. And, um, and thank you so much for, for your time this morning, Uncle Gillard. Yeah, mate, and uh, thank you. And by the way, if you know people want to be able to uh, have got time and they want to come bush one day, well then you know, um, yeah, just drop a line and uh, drop in. Thank you so much for that offer. Um, I'd, I'd like to take that up uh, myself uh, when we can <laughs> travel freely again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Stay safe, okay. guys. Yeah. All right. All the best.
All the best. Bye. Okay. Bye now. Bye-bye.